Alright guys, update video on this dog shit ass gun. Just a quick one because not much has changed. We do have the OSS can on there, so we have a real silencer on it. And I got my muzzle brake on there for the QD attachment. And we set it up a little bit so that it could function well if it was reliable. But it's not with any subsonic ammo. I tried these three kinds today. We had Minimum Munitions, and this is the 200 grain stuff. And then we have this Defender Ammunition, 220 grain stuff. And then we have Sig Sauer's new self-defense rounds, which these are 200 grain, 205 grain. So, none of them. This, this shit was a one-shot at a time. It couldn't lock back, it couldn't cycle at all. This stuff was kind of hit or miss reliability. I could get some to cycle. None of them could lock the magazines back, but um, this would cycle some of them. This would cycle uh, less, but it seemed like the heavier one worked a little bit better, but it still wasn't reliable at all. I'd still get just a couple rounds off, and then you get a malfunction, and then it's just under-gassed. This, this gun is just super under-gassed, and I do have the gas setting on the highest setting and there is nothing I can do about this. My other effort to try to break this thing in was to lock the bolt back for the last like three days. So I locked, I locked the bolt back and just left it in my safe hoping that the springs would wear in a little bit just being locked all the way back like that. Nothing helped. Put the can on, didn't help at all exact same performance. Like I said, this OSS can doesn't add much back pressure, if at all, so I, I knew that was going to happen, and it did. So overall, this thing just cannot hold a candle to the ultimate PDW, which is right behind it, the AR platform. This was my venture into try to doing the MCX bandwagon train going on right now, and Man, this thing is just better in every single way. We have a three inch longer barrel on this one. So the overall gun is about seven inches longer because you do have this very abbreviated buffer tube in the back, but you still have a buffer tube. And then the three inch longer barrels, so you end up getting about seven inch longer gun, but it is lighter and it is reliable. Uh, this thing, as you can see, it's about the same size with the stock folded and the suppressor on there so that's a cool design concept with this gun and they had, sig had some opportunity here if they could make this reliable but since it can't cycle subs and the gun's clearly meant to shoot subsonic rounds as it's made to have suppressors oh my gosh yeah this thing is just such a shit show huge disappointment and to touch back on the last video real quick, people were questioning why you'd want to shoot subsonic rounds, especially unsuppressed. So one of the beauties of 300 Blackout is that it comes readily in subsonic rounds so that you can make them very quiet. And now we have even ammo that's specifically designed. So this stuff is polymer tipped and it's 205 grain and it's made to expand at slower speeds. So the whole caliber revolves around its being versatile enough to shoot supersonic and subsonic. And when you shoot silenced, namely this gun, you're going to want to shoot subsonic a lot. But we don't always have silencers on our guns, guys. If you guys own silencers, you know what I'm talking about. I have this one 30 cal rifle suppressor, and it goes on all of my shit. I have QDs on this, I have QDs on this, I have QDs on my SCAR, on my MDR, all the... Th that anywhere, even on my 223s, this can goes on all of my rifles. So it's a little slut and it travels around. It's not always attached to my self-defense gun. So if your can is traveling around, then you need your gun to work with the ammo that you have it zeroed in for and you have it set for and you're gonna carry it. And for instance, I always carry some sort of polymer tipped subsonic round because I'm probably going to have it silenced, but if I don't, it still needs to work. So that's my whole story with that. Also, when you're transporting the guns, namely this one, because it's a little bit longer, I always take the silencer off it to transport it, it for size constraints. And then in that case, the silencer is off. So if I ever need it in a, in a hurry, in an emergency, I might not have time to put the silencer on, but I always have the silencer with it 
in case I have an extra second, I can just twist it on real quick and I'm ready to go with the silencer on it. So that's very important too. And then what if your silencer breaks? Then you can't use your gun anymore because your silencer breaks. So now you need a whole source of backup ammunition in case you don't have your silencer with you so that your gun can work. So this whole design philosophy for this Rattler is just shit. They have an adjustable gas system, make it work. Make it work with everything. Uh, there's no excuse to have an adjustable gas system on a $2,500 gun. $2,600 once you add in shipping and fees and all that shit. And it, it can't work with the most common loadings that the caliber it's designed to shoot has. You know, people are going to shoot subsonic rounds out of 300 blackout all the time, especially in a gun designed to be uh, silenced inside the handguard and everything. So, I mean, that's just the design philosophy of this gun. It's uh, totally unacceptable. This thing is shit. I do not recommend it whatsoever. And I'm either going to sell this thing or send it back to SIG. But, uh, yeah, this thing is just a friggin' paperweight from the factory with subsonic ammo, which is unacceptable on every level especially for how much it costs. Then you throw in the useless stock that sucks and is an insult to everything firearms. Then you throw in the highly mediocre trigger and that little shitty grip. Oh man, yeah, uh, don't recommend. Do not recommend. So there's my quick update video. Catch you guys later. See ya.